Welcome to this video where I'll be showing you how to use Fusion 360 to create fan blades or propeller blades similar to these. So the first thing we need to do is to create a new file and then inside here we're going to put a cylinder so that we can then position the blades around it. If you want to add holes and locating slots and so on to it that's something you can do from watching some of the other videos to learn how to use planes and extrusion tool to cut holes in things. So the first thing we do is create a sketch on the Z X axis. We use circular tool to draw a diameter that we want. So for this example, it's going to be 30 millimeters, but obviously it depends on the size of the object you're drawing. Finish the sketch, extrude. I do that in one direction to 40 and then change it so that we're going two sides and the other side will be 10. And the reason I'm doing this is so that when I draw on my blade and it starts at the zero point, there'll be 10 millimeters material underneath. I'll make the blade 30 millimeters tall. There'll be 10 millimeters left at the top. So by drawing a circle and extruding 40 up and 10 down, that gives me 30 in the middle, which is the height of the blade I'll be making. So what I can do now is I can hide that body and then go to create coil. What we're going to do is create two coils, one for the inner edge of the blade, one for the outer edge of the blade. So we need to place the coil on to the same axis, X, Z, and draw it on. You'll notice that it doesn't automatically snap the view back to a 2D view. So we're going to type in the diameter, which we want to be 30 mil. Now, you can see it's given us this coil here, but we don't, don't we don't want the whole coil, we actually want a section of the coil to go up along the edge of the cylinder we've already created. So we need to change the settings over here. So we want it to be the height and pitch. Most of the time you'll find the default setting will be revolution and height or revolution and pitch. So go to that rotation menu, sorry, type menu and choose height and pitch. Then the diameter is already set, we've done that already. Go to height and type in 30 as we said we wanted it to be 30 mil in the middle of that cylinder the pitch for this one i'm going to set at 200 so that's going to go around to there and then the section we want it to be triangular external we want the section size for this to be quite small just three mil because we're not actually using the section what all we're actually going to use is this edge of the triangle here as a guide so the new body so we can hide it and it's not going to interfere with anything. Do the same again for the external edge. So if you know the width you want of your blade, you need to add that to 30. So I'm going to make mine 115. And change all the settings again. So I know that the height is going to be 30. Pitch is going to be 200. This is going to be 3. It's best to have a piece of paper with you to write all these things down and plan it out and you'll find that you need to experiment quite a bit with it. But you can see now what we've got are these two triangular sections of a coil, looks a bit like a thread, and we're going to use this point here and that point there, those edges, to create our blade. So we say OK. Now what we need to do is we need to go into the surface settings. Because what we're going to do is create a surface that runs between there and there and then we're going to sweep it all the way up. If we try and do this in the solid settings, it simply won't allow you to select that line because it's not a solid object yet. You could, of course, use the solid settings. If you want a tapered profile or so on, you can draw that tapered profile on instead. But for this tutorial, we're going to show you the surface settings. I'm going to create a sketch. And we're going to put it onto the Y, X plane. We're going to zoom right in. And we need to project a point at the end of each triangular section and then use the line tool to draw between them. The points help us in the program to ensure that when we when we sweep this around it will remain accurate. You can look up the exact technical details of that in your own time. So what we're going to do now is to sweep. So you can see up here we've got the sweep tool create sweep. If you want to, you can pin it to your toolbar like I have. And then we choose 
path and guide rail. Now the path will be this part here, that's the path this is going to follow, and this is the guide rail, that means the other end of our surface will follow all the way around here. Now we want it to be the full extent, we want it to go from here to there. If we don't put that on, it will probably stop somewhere in the middle. So what we want to do here is select our profile that we're going to sweep, select the path it will follow, and then select the guide rail for it to follow. And you see it's automatically gone on there. Now we're happy with that, new body. Okay, so now you'll see we've got this surface body here. And we've got these solid bodies here. We want to get rid of these two, just hide them away. And now what we're going to do is to thicken this. So then we need to create, thicken, and then give it the thickness we want. So I'm going to go for one millimeter because I want this blade to be quite thin. It's going onto a small component. Right. If you wanted to thicken it either side, so if it was important that it actually got thicker half a millimeter above and half a millimeter below the line, you can of course choose symmetric where it will give it thickness on both sides, whereas we've just gone for one side because it doesn't really matter. But if we were trying to be super accurate then we would use symmetric. Now that we've got our blade, we might actually want to round these edges off. So what we're going to do is go back to the solid options. I'm going to go to fill it, so modify, fill it, you see there, F is the shortcut key for that. And if we zoom in and click on this edge, we can then fill it that to round this edge of the blade off. So then we just type in what we want. Let's try 20, seems good. Then we're going to go up to the top, change our view. Try again. That's better. And then escape F for fill it. Select that and 20. Okay, now obviously if you want to round any of these other surfaces off, you can attempt to do that, but for this example, we're just going to stop there. And let's go back to this view here. So you can see we've now got our blade. If we turn on our original body, you can see that actually we've made it too wide. Now if you want to change any of these features, we can go in, double click on these, move them around. So for example, I can go into the coil and move that back and then change the drawing. But for this, I'm just going to change the initial cylinder and adjust that to 32. See if that helps. No. Ah, right, that's because I put the edge on the external. So when I was creating the coil, I chose the external, if I'd chosen the, uh, sorry, not the external, I chose on center. If I'd put it on the inside, that point would have been at the 30 millimeter mark. But because I've put it on center, the center of the coil was at the 30 mil mark. So we can adjust that when we're working. But for now, just for this example, let's go back into there. Let's make that 35. There we go. So now it's hidden inside our object. What we can do, if we want multiples of these blades, we don't want to have to draw each one over and over again. So instead of having to draw it, what we can do is we can go to Create, Pattern, Circular Pattern. We can select this, and then select the face. We want, oh, what's that? Bodies, that's good, that. And then the axis, we want it to be around this. And there you go, you've got your three blades and you can add more or fewer completely up to you but that's where they're going to be if you want to keep them in there you can add them in so you can see let's add another one in four blades if you want to make something like a turbine you can add loads in so that is the first few steps now one of the problems you might have when you come to try to export this into an engineering drawing you might find that these interior components or these interior edges of the blades 
show up in your drawing as hidden detail. If you want to combine them all together, you can use the combine tool. So let's have a look. Combine. So target body, this one, tool bodies, one, two, three, make it a new component. So now we should have, if we go to here, you can see that actually, if we zoom right in, this now stops at the edge. So instead of when we take it into our engineering drawing, it showing hidden detail on the inside, it's now all combined as one solid part because we're going to be injection molding this uh, later on. But that's it. That's pretty much all you need to know to get you started on adding blades to your project.